what do you do when you have a messy pantry and you're not exactly sure exactly what you should be stocking up on or the deals that you should find? Well, I'm gonna show you because the first thing you have to do is you have to go through, get the pantry cleaned and organized, and as you're doing that, you take stock and inventory. So come along with me and I'll show you exactly how I organize the pantry clean out inventory and give you all my tips and tricks so you can do it at your house too. All right, I'm just gonna give you a real life look. I don't have a big pantry here in my kitchen. I have this one little narrow shelf and over the past ending of the school year, it's gotten to be quite a mess. You can see I have a lot of gaps right there. Things are disorganized. I mean, why do I have ice cream cones right there with my beans and things stacked all over. So I just have this little shelf. I've gotten my freezer organized, so now it's time to tackle the pantry. This is my main pantry, but you can get creative. And so if we move right over here, I have taken over this little cupboard and this has become a pantry, which is also very disorganized right now. We've got a couple kids things and then again, there's gaps back there of some boxes and it's just quite a disorganized mess. So let's get to it and try to make some order of it today. Okay, so I just took everything out of the pantry that didn't belong in those spaces. It really was quite disorganized and I rinsed down the shelves. My shelves weren't that dirty. If yours are, or if you haven't done this in a long time, you probably do wanna pull out absolutely everything, but I already kinda of have a little bit of it divided. I have chips on the very top and then I do like baking goods next. And then we have like canned tomatoes, mac and cheese. And then this is my canned goods shelf right here. And the bottom shelf is my baking things, like my sugar, my flour, all those things and condiments. So since I already knew where it was, I kind of just pulled out the things that didn't belong. Now I'm gonna look at what's remaining here and I'm gonna go through and check expiration dates because let's get real. I wanna see if I'm really using these things or if they're long out. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do with what's here. I'm gonna pull the things that are gonna expire the soonest to the front. It's just called rotating your stock of what you have. So I'm gonna quick check through those things and then we'll start refilling in the shelves. So let's check expiration dates and get everything that is currently left on the shelves organized before we fill things back in. Okay, that's not the most exciting thing to do, but it is good to do. Most of the things in my pantry did expire like a whole year plus. They were like 2025 or late 2024. However, unfortunately, I did find some things that slipped through the cracks. And there's a couple ways to deal with this. This really is up to you. Use your best judgment, of course. Now, if I find expired things, like tomatoes, I'm not gonna hold on to them and use them. Anything acidic, any tomato products, tomato paste, tomato sauce, I generally do if they get past that date, I go ahead and dispose of them. Just, it's not worth the risk for me. Those things don't last as well. Now, if you find some cake mixes or things like that that are past date, you know, if you're gonna go ahead, open them up, smell them, see if they smell and look fine. And if you wanna use them to bake, if they're pretty recently expired, go for it. If you find something that is a year or two past, like a random lemon pudding mix, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it too, but it's always up to you. So all in all, just a couple things right here that I found that were expired and it feels really good to have that cleaned out. So I'll get rid of those things, move those off. And then I went through everything else still in the pantry and it is sorted now front to back. All right, so now let's go ahead and put things that were on the table back in the pantry. Okay, now everything that was originally in here is back in, and as you can see, it looks a lot neater. But if you notice, like right here and here, there's a lot of space, which means I have a lot of gaps. Now, thankfully, I do have a stockpile, and this is one of the key reasons I think everyone should have a stockpile based on the things you buy. So my first step to restocking my pantry is this is everything I use on a regular basis. Now I'm gonna head down to the basement, shop my stockpile down there, and bring it up to the kitchen and refill it right here. I will check expiration dates as I'm doing it. Like I said, most of these now are 2025, which is a full year out but if I notice any, I'll slide them in. So 
this is the fun part, let's get busy restocking here and then see if I still have gaps that I need to go grocery shopping for. Here we go. It looks so much better. Look at everything is finally all neat and organized, restocked. Remember how disorganized these shelves were? And all of this stuff was just in my pantry. So we'll start here at the bottom. This is my baking goods, like I said, right here. And so this is sugar on that side, stacked up four pounds times eight, 32 pounds right there. I have 20 pounds of flour. The bottom is golf wax for Buckeyes and some other like baking things. Top is marshmallows so they don't get smushed. And then one thing of brown sugar and powdered sugar just to make sure I'm restocked. At the bottom here in these tins, I didn't even touch these. This little one is chocolate chips right there. The big one in the back is um, big bags of chocolate chips and then those are bags of oatmeal right there plus some peanut butter powder and protein powder and lemonade and condiments all right so then we're moving to the canned goods shelf i noticed right away i am almost out of pumpkin so each of these go about five back and then i double stack them they are sturdy shelves my father-in-law built them you notice there is no warping and i've been stacking them full like this for a long time so we have five cans of pumpkin, and that is all the pumpkin I have. Definitely need to restock. Peaches, as I was going through, I do notice a lot of our peaches expire in the next couple months, so we're gonna eat more of those. I stack refried beans and enchilada sauce together because I use that for enchilada casserole, and I know I need one can of each, so that's enough for five recipes there. And then garbanzo beans are on the bottom. Top are pinto or black beans. I'm really the only one who uses those when I'm eating munches or different things. We have green beans and corn. Those are our canned vegetables we eat the most. And then cream of chicken soup for poppy seed chicken. Again, double stacked, so I have 10 cans right there. And then we have some canned chicken. I had bought this for a stockpile, and again, these are gonna expire in the next couple months, so I've been doing them for quick chicken salad for lunch. Very delicious. Little tuna and broth back there. Two jars of tomato sauce because, or pasta sauce, because I typically make my own with some uh, chia seeds and some different things there. I have diced tomatoes. I could almost do two rows and I debated that, but for now I'm just gonna leave it as one to use up these couple in the front. Lasagna noodles and then tomato paste and sauce. Again, I use one of each when I'm making my homemade tomato sauce right there. One jar of stuffed olives and mac and cheese. Only a couple boxes of that, so definitely need to restock that as well. I do have plenty more tomatoes downstairs, so I'm not worried about that. Going up to our baking shelf right here, there's some corn syrup, all my sweetened condensed milk, only two of those, some almond extract when I had gotten a really good deal, and a marshmallow cream. Plenty of cake mix right here, and let's see, one or two brownie mixes I think right there, yep. And then this is all my instant pudding, that is still good, chocolate, vanilla, and some white chocolate. And then applesauce cups for school lunches, that is currently all I have. I definitely need to restock that before school starts. And my last cup of peaches, plus one thing of croutons. And then the top shelf is chips, and I put our ice cream cones up there because that seemed to make more sense. Super excited how this pantry turned out. This was a bigger job than I thought, but this is the most organized it has been in a long, long time. Now, let's go ahead and tackle that little pantry right next to us. That shouldn't take nearly as long. Okay, that didn't take nearly as long, thankfully, which I didn't think it would. The trick is that everything on these shelves, I really don't have in the basement. We live in Northern Indiana. We, a long time ago, several years ago, had a little bit of a problem with the mice. Since then, I have tried to not keep anything perishable downstairs. It's only cans or jars, and anything that I do, I do box or bin up, just as a precaution. Again, we haven't had mice in several, several years, but better safe than sorry. So anything up here, this really is kind of my crackers, my pasta, taco shells, those type of things. I do have some kids things in here. We have Play-Doh and sand, and then the back are painting things. And I left a couple of their drawing um, eraser books there, but we had some finger paint kits and a spirograph, which I don't know how they ended up in there. We'll move those out of the way to make it a little more organized. Now, let me show you in a little closer what I have and what gaps I need to fill in here for sure. 
All right, so this is the big container of Ritz from Sam's, and I only have six sleeves left in there, so like a box and a half. So I definitely want to watch for a sale on those. I am doing, okay, on taco shells. Okay, let's go back to the Ritz. So if you can find them under $2.50 a box, I feel like that's a good deal. Otherwise, buy them at Sam's. That works out the best deal, plus you get two extra sleeves. So unless you can find them under $2.50 a box, now I always buy them at Sam's. And again, these are for poppy seed chicken, sometimes for snacking on. Taco shells, I'm okay on crunchy taco shells. I also have a big thing of soft shells here. And you know what, I'm gonna grab, I never put those back in the pantry. Are there shells? Let me go grab those and put them in there too. There we go, I was debating where to put those. So I'm just gonna stack all of them right there. Then in this Kilwin's bin, this is again any assorted chocolate or chocolate chips. I have some Snickers, for apple Snickers salad, um, some Hershey Kisses, just random chocolate. Again, that can be overflow of chocolate chips too. Definitely going to stock up on those because prices are going up. One thing of rice cakes. Again, Oreos. I found it's cheapest now to buy those at Sam's. I use those basically just for cheesecake crusts. I only have three sleeves left in there, so I will watch for a sale on those. Two of the cheap cornbread mix. And then I'm going to pull this all out again quick so you can see the pasta. And there go the tortillas. All right. Real life here. So this is the pasta I have. It's okay, it is double stacked. So right there is 12, and then I have another two, four, six, eight down here. So 20 boxes of pasta plus two little spaghetti. I bought, started buying those pot-sized spaghetti. I love them. I don't have to break my noodles anymore. And then two lasagna. So okay on pasta, but I will definitely always keep watching for a sale that has a really long shelf life. You can see I have one more rice cakes back there. And then crackers. This is where I need to stock up. The penguin goldfish are left over from a kindergarten snack. I'll take those in for preschool snack this upcoming year. I have two boxes of Triscuits, which my daughter Emma takes those for school lunches every day. Definitely need to watch for a sale and restock on those. And then you can tell, as I scooch to the other side, I really have gaps. I have three boxes of the wheat thins right there which we use when we do um, smoked cream cheese. I have two boxes of graham crackers, two of the graham cracker sticks, and two of the cornbread, the really good cornbread. This is our favorite. If you've heard me on my grocery hauls, we absolutely love that. Simply homemade Fleischmann's cornbread, so good. Perfect cornbread every time. So I would like to have at least four boxes of everything. So four cornbreads. I'm okay with the graham crackers because I have the sticks. And wheat thins, I aim for two because we really only use those when we have those, but I really need to restock on the Triscuits. All right, but this too is all organized and it feels so good. Okay, that project's done and it feels so good. I've been watching my pantry over the last couple months and it just has been getting more disorganized and there were gaps and all of the things. So let's be honest, this probably, it's summertime, took me no more than an hour and a half, probably closer to an hour, and that's with pulling everything out, cleaning shelves, running up and down to the basement, stopping to help the kids find tape measures and do all sorts of things. So it's done. Here's what you need to do if you are trying to figure out how to stockpile. You need to go through and clean out your pantry and organize it. I know it's one of those projects we push off. I probably try to clean it out once to twice a year, but the last time I did a thorough clean out like this where I checked expiration dates, I honestly don't know. It's probably been at least two years. So this was a great time for me to figure it out too. A lot of these things that I have, these are the things that we use on a regular basis. By looking at what we have and what expired, I was able to see what I don't need to restock and what we're not using as much of. For example, I had a lot of tomatoes. We went through a season where we were doing a lot of chilies and soups and things, and we haven't been doing that as much. Same with the cake mix. I used to bake with that and do bunt cakes and all the things. I still do, but obviously not as much as what I had stocked up on. Now on the other hand, green beans, corn, pumpkin, I'm down to my last couple cans of pumpkin. Those are the things I know I do need to restock because we're using so much that I don't even have any left in my basement stockpile. If you haven't seen my basement stockpile, I will leave a link to that below. And this right here is exactly why I think everyone should have a stocked pantry and a stocked basement stockpile, or just a stocked, just think of it as having a stocked pantry with some overflow, okay? You don't have to go all crazy about it, but what you do want to do is buy the things your family uses on low prices and buy them now, when you find a good sale, that is. For example, these beans and corn right here, 
I bought these at Thanksgiving time when they were running. I'm trying to remember if it was two for a dollar or three. It used to be, you could get them four or three for a dollar. I think it was two for a dollar, which is the best price I've seen in a while. And I stocked up. the at, When I bought them, the expiration dates were two to three years out. Now, I only bought the things that our family uses, which is canned corn and canned green beans, but I knew that we were gonna use it. It was a good sale. I stocked up on as much as my budget allowed on the things that my family would use on a regular basis and that I could fit in my pantry, in my stockpile. Same thing was with cream of chicken soup there. I know we eat poppy seed chicken at least once, maybe twice a month. Each time I make the recipe, I need two cans of cream of chicken soup. You can also fill out your stockpile doing that and fill your pantry. If I know that we are going to eat it once a month, right here, this is enough to get me through five months. However, we're probably eating it twice a month and I'm giving it to people. So right then, then I've cut that in half. That's only enough for two months right here. So look at your favorite recipes, multiply out the ingredients of what you need and what you want to have. A good goal, start by buying one now and two for later when you see a good sale. And as you get there, then work yourself up to having more when you have those good sales. If there's something your family knows that you really, really love, those are the things you want to stock up on. For me, baking items are really important, so I always have sugar and flour, brown sugar, powdered sugar, and chocolate chips on hand. Powdered sugar I typically only use around buckeye making time, but the brown sugar, sugar, and flour I use year-round in chocolate chips. So right now, knowing that chocolate chips are going up on price means I need to stock up on those and make sure I have plenty to get me through the next several months. My current goal is to have three to six months worth of food for our family in our pantry at all times. And depending on which item you're looking for, I have some of that. I'm definitely at the three month mark, but it depends based on the item. So I've organized the pantry. I've looked at what I do have. Next up, I'm gonna to have to tackle the stockpile and I'll take you along when I do that. For now, you can check out my current stockpile video from the last time I did that about six months ago. But I promise as in all things, I'll take you along because my goal in showing you this process was to hopefully make you realize it's not that hard to figure out. It just starts by organizing your pantry. Get it all organized, get rid of what's expired and don't stock up as much on those things and stock up on the things that you do need. Do you have any other tips you'd leave when you, for others as they're cleaning out their pantry? If you do want to learn more about stockpiling, I do have a whole playlist of videos about that and I will leave that link in the description as well. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.